After 11 years, Shell agrees to pay Ogoni people a compensation of $45.9 billion for oil spills in their communities. And Lagos State Government moves to reduce pensions of ex-governors. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna The Shell Petroleum Development Company, SPDC, has agreed to pay the 45.9 billion naira awarded to the Ogoni people of River State as the compensation for the oil spills in their communities. The lawyer to Shell, A.O. Ejelamo, said the company had resolved to pay the monetary compensation awarded in 2010. In 2001, the Ogoni people had instituted a suit against the oil company for the losses allegedly caused by the oil spills. Ibrahim Buba, then of Potaka Division of the Federal High Court, in June of 2010, gave the judgment in favor of the Ogoni people, awarding 17 billion naira as compensation. SPDC appealed against the judgment up to the Supreme Court. However, it lost. Well, joining us to discuss this is Nimmo Bassi. He's an environmental activist, Celestina Akboburi National Co Coordinator of Ogoni Solidarity Forum. And of course, we have Reverend Father Edward Obi. He is a public affairs analyst and he's also a representative of NACOND. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Yes, All right, great. So I'm, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Bobby, because you, of course, represent the Ogoni people. And um, I have been in several um, forums where this conversation about the payment of 45.9 billion naira uh, is being paid to the Ogoni communities. And some people think it's, um, it's been a long time coming. But there are also people who think that this is an insult on the communities, being that... Since 2010, 17 billion, if you count it with interest, should be over 45 billion. But then again, what do I know? But tell me what you think as someone who has been fighting for the interests of the Ogoni people. Well, I want to correct the impression that they that um, are more Ogoni than my two reverend gentlemen. They are all of our all Ogoni people. We have been fighting together with the twenty father of Bijan left Ogoni today. Nimubasi is always there. So Ogoni struggle is not a local struggle. <laughs> we are all Ogoni. Yeah, I haven't said that. Um yeah, 45 million, 45 billion to some people, you know, it sounds so so big considering um the number of people in the Jama, the Bobo community. But if you weigh that, you know, uh with the losses that we have incurred as for loss of livelihood and lives, either you will see that um, that's a patriot song. That just a slap on the wrist or shell. It's like taking my shirt from me and you cut one tiny button and give back to me. And that is exactly what has happened. If you've gone through UNEP report, you will see that that report is a death sentence. Uh, and that's why life has become so short in Ogoni. So um, 45 billion, as far as I'm concerned, is nothing compared to what has happened to our people. However, if there is anything to celebrate about this judgment, it's the fact that for the first time, a Nigerian judge will be standing his ground and he fit to say, yes, you must pay this money. That's the only good news here. Because all what we've been seeing, if you have been following up litigation with buy companies, is that they will continue to bribe the judges until the litigants die. Hmm. But I, I guess that they are they are changing their position now because <laughs> they are not an island. They have heard that courts at the head, home country of Shell and London, even in the US in the case between cancer over family and Shell, that they've started giving favorable judgment to community people. So they don't want to look um, like they don't they don't know what is happening in the world, I think. So if they're anything to celebrate, it's not that for the first time, 
We are hearing one good news from a court in Nigeria. Thank you. Interesting. Um, and let me come to Nimmo because we are talking about climate change every day. Um, I, I spoke to um, a professor from a university in Boston and we were talking about climate change and the wildfires in Turkey and the floods in India. I mean, we're also experiencing all kinds of climate changes in the different parts of the country. And here we are in Ogoni, we're not just dealing with an oil spill, but we're also dealing with a damage to, um, you know, the sources of revenue for these people, the sources of nature, their water, um, their farmlands, literally everything has um, one way or the other been destroyed by this oil spill. Now, when we talk about the issue of cleanup, it's either it's being politicized or nothing is being done about it. But yes, money has now been paid. How about the cleanup? How about getting the people in those areas back to something that seems like normal? Is there a possibility? If we cannot get Mr. Bassi, let's go to Fadalbi. Fadalbi, can you help us to answer that question? Yes. Um, thank you, Mary Ann. Um, uh, you have touched upon something very important there. Climate change is a present reality and will continue to be present right up to the future. Uh, the wildfires that you are hearing about, the floods that you are hearing about, are not only in those faraway places, they are also right here in Nigeria. The impact of climate change in Nigeria cannot be separated from, there's a direct correlation that can be made between the activities of organizations like Shell and the climate change incidents of global warming events even in Nigeria. Only recently, uh, about a week or a week and a half ago, I was at a conference in Lagos where a research had directly tied the, um, the uh, events in the northeast of Nigeria, like the Lake Chad uh, area, uh, uh, with the uh, oil and gas uh, flaring that is going on in the Niger Delta. There, there are correlations that can be made at all times. And the fact that climate change is upon us, uh, a little event like in the Niger Delta impacts not only Nigeria, but the global uh, atmosphere. And if the global atmosphere is affected or impacted anywhere in the world, it also becomes a problem here. So it is, it's about time that organizations like this, uh, organization Shell, and other organizations that are uh, bent on continuing the very unsustainable exploitation and use of fossil fuels, even in this day and age in our life, they should reconsider uh, this and think of better alternatives that are being uh, proffered all over the world. So let us not wait until we have reached two degrees. Let us start to make the, uh, the, 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 the preparations right now and give our, our, peop our people the adaptation mechanisms that they need to, to be able to cope with um, climate change and global warming as it occurs. The environment of the Niger Delta, particularly in the area of the Niger Delta known as Ogoni land and all its many and varied communities remains impacted, remains um, subdued, remains already polluted and for a generation and more, people from that area will continue to suffer this impact. Somebody said to me more, uh, today after they saw uh, Goi community and the pollution that went on there several years ago, they said, this is only the beginning. Shell will pay more than triple of that. And I believed him immediately. Okay, well, Nimo Basi is back. Uh, Mr. Basi, I was asking a question before um, your uh, network knocked you off. Um, I was talking about the fact that Climate change is, you know, it's becoming more, more and more real to us. And the issue of the cleanup in Ogoni land has either been politicized, used as a campaign tool, but the reality is that nothing has happened. How do we get the people in those affected areas to have something close to at least a normal life if we do not start that cleanup anytime soon? And again, is there really a possibility in the horizon with the attitude of Shell and our government uh, to see a cleanup anytime soon. Well, um, thank you for tying up Shell and the government uh, and the cleanup because the two 
are very closely intertwined. Uh, the cleanup has started. We cannot deny that, actually. But you can say that it's not as it's not been as, as extensive as expected at this time, not as fast as expected. We have not seen work beginning on complex sites uh, as at this time. And of course, there's been the criticism that the emergency measures have not been taken, have not been done 10 years after the union report has been written. Now, um, if the cleanup is politicized, that is that's really sad because it's very unfair for anyone to play politics with other people's lives. And this is the time not only to clean up Ogoniland, but to begin the process of cleaning up the wider Niger Delta. Because as we speak, there are oil spills ongoing somewhere in the Niger Delta. At every there are oil spills that last up to one year. I'll give you an example. The Zoro one, Aurora one well offshore on those state caught fire blew up in april 2020 and uh, and that thing has not been attended to there's still uh, traces of spill and for satellite image, images you see some fire around there and so when we have a situation where the entire region has become a sacrifice zone uh, we really need to worry and we need to put pressure uh, on the government to wake up to its responsibility Shell is already showing signs that they want to wash their hands of the of the communities and move offshore. That is something that should worry us. That's something that should work should be a wake up sign uh, signal to our politicians. It's not enough to say where well, they're selling off their assets to local firms. No, they have to take care of their liabilities, and they should not be left off the hook just because they're moving somewhere else. I'm, this is really interesting. I was taking notes because I'm going to come back to you to ask whose responsibility it is. But let me swing back to Mr. Bobbery. Um, the, the Ogoni Solidarity Front and many other fronts uh, in Ogoni land and in the Niger Delta that are pushing for cleanup, especially the one in Ogoni land. How, how, what is the reception that you're getting in terms of um, government changing the you know um the tide of things because nimmo has said that it's very slow the pace of work is slow uh, at least there, there's been a start of sorts but then we're looking at the time frame and if it doesn't start early enough then of course 25 years down the line we will have children born into those communities and god knows what kinds of diseases or what kinds of problems that they're going to face, whether it's ecological, whether it's health. I mean, we do not know. But what are the Ogoni people doing, aside from going to court, aside from taking, um, getting um, Shell to pay these monies? What are the Ogoni people doing to get their governments a bit more involved? And I'm not talking about the federal government. I'm talking about the River State government to push so that this cleanup is not just lip service, but in actuality it is done for the benefit of your people well you know the way politics is played in nigeria today um the governor in power in river state is a pdp governor the government um carrying out the cleanup is an apc government uh, actually when this project started in 2016 um the pdp people said that nothing was happening that it was a campaign gimmick you know because it was a pdp government that received the report in 2011 and did not do anything so when the apc government said we will claim they said that no that nothing was happening so um the only belief that something was happening when um they heard that 380 million US dollars was in an account. And they have actually awarded the first 21 sites and paid contractors. Ah, that was when they believed that there was money. So, um, most but, recently. But do you also think that it's because there's no synergy? Because I, I, I really don't understand whether it's a PDP or APC government. No, the way, if there was the a way, synergy, the would, there be, would there be a cause for doubt? Because if the federal government was liaising with the state government for something that they're doing at their backyard, would there not have been that clear? Um, there would, would, would that doubt not have been cleared? No, I'm just, it's the dangerous nature of politics played in Nigeria, especially in River State. Don't forget that uh, Rotimi Amechi is leading the APC in River State, and um, Governor Winke is leading the PDP. You know, they are irreconcilable. They, have, they can't meet, they are two parallel lines. So that's, that's it. If the, APC, if the PDP government will want to applaud, 
what the APC is doing. Then they'll be giving credit to them. But in fairness to them now, um, a six over six billion water contract was awarded in March this year. And um, that water project is being done in partnership with the River State Government Ministry of Water Resources. So that is the first synergy that they are having. The second one is being expected in the area of citing um, a center for excellence. I'm aware that I prefer written to the governor to provide land for them so that they can commence fencing and possibly you know, kick starting uh, the building of a center for excellence. But I, 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 we have a new board in place and we have a new acting project coordinator in place. You have a new minister in place too. So that we also change the way relationship, you know, are built. And so we look forward to having uh, a better relationship. But our concern, it's all like Reverend Nimo said, is that um, what was that an emergency measure, like water, you know, should have come first. This is what we should have, you know, in a place where you have government that care for the people. As soon as they receive that report, which I call a death sentence, a state of emergency would have been declared in Ogoni. Call it any name. You can call it a capi federal capital, the, like the kind of name you call Abuja, federal capital territory. Special development, because, you know, people were in a, a state of death. But because you have, <laughs> we, you, 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 you have a situation where there is a total absence of government, they turn dead ears to it. It is only now that they are beginning to award contracts for the water. It shouldn't be so. And, 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 and like I said, and community people are on them, and we will make sure that we mount pressure on whoever, whether they are the local government, whether they are the state, or the federal government. We won't leave any stone on top. All right. Back to you, Father Obi. Um, he's talking about accountability here. Um, but I want to talk about responsibility in terms of um, governments at all levels, because... I remember how long it has taken for us to even address or scratch the surface of this Ogoni cleanup, and I've heard it for so long. And Nagond and other you know, NGOs of, of the nature of Nagond have been on this issue. I have been to so many sessions and fora where these issues are being discussed. So where is the sense of responsibility on the past of our leaders? Because if they were as serious, again, I would, I would make reference to a conversation that journalists had on this issue. And many blame the insincerity on the path of our government uh, to the reason why this um, spill and the cleanup has taken forever to happen. Now monies have been released. Uh, what, where is the sense of responsibility and sincerity on, our, on the part of our leaders? How do we also ensure that CSOs, um, NGOs, how do you ensure that there's a follow through to make sure that everything is done to the latter? And again, politicians don't take over this, this particular you know, situation. Well, your fear is like my fear, Mary. And, you know, uh, politicians may jump on the bandwagon now. Uh, and begin to claim that this was their win and their gain, etc., and uh, begin to make do politics out of it. One thing that um, worries me is that politicians in Nigeria have lost every sense of the dignity of the human person. They are in the business of politics not for any other reason except to aggrandize themselves and to make gain out of it. Now, if they had any sense at all of the dignity of the human person, they would know that for, for, for over half a century, the people in this area have suffered the adverse effects, the impacts of the oil and gas industry. And just when a research has come to light to prove that you know, the things that we spoke about mostly in hushed tones are actually true. Therefore, they should be even more ready, more eager to take the bull by the horns and execute these projects that would bring relief to the people. You are talking of responsibility. How else can a politician be responsible uh, to his people except by doing those things that would bring life and abundant life to their people? But this is what we haven't seen. 
10 years of the uh, of the UNEP report and we haven't seen anything happen or very little has happened. I was, as I said, in Bordeaux today and I saw um, a boat being loaded with um, seedlings of, uh, of uh, 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 mangrove to be planted in areas that they said they had cleaned up, you know. But how long will it take for those mangroves to grow to the stature of the mangroves that were there before, that did all the work of, you know, um, absorbing all kinds of uh, toxic uh, effluents from the industry, also cleaning the waters and acting as a barrier to erosion and flood in that area, and also as, as a spawning area for the fish that, that, that uh, were always in that area spawning their little ones. So it would take more than a generation. And if you calculate all of that and put it all together, then you can see why I have a worry that the present crop of politicians that we have in Nigeria do not have the wherewithal. When I say wherewithal, I mean the ethical and uh, the uh, emotional and also the, 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 um, the responsibility wherewithal to be able to execute this. Okay. And I, I do not mean lightly, mean it lightly when I say that. I mean that they we need a different kind of politics in this country, and particularly in this region. A politics that is respond, a, a policy, a, um, a, a politics that that seeks the good of the people before their own self aggrandizement that's the kind of politics that we need in this region that's a conversation for another day don't even get me started but let me go to um um Nimmo. Nimmo, i know that you have been an activist you've you know spoken on issues of environment you know the, the ecology and all of that and 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 you raised an issue earlier on and i'm going to you know push that to you now but finally um what is the future and the hope of these communities that are experiencing these oil spills and the degradation of the environment. And don't forget, Patakot in itself is also experiencing a form of degra degradation. Um, for years, we have been talking about the suits in the atmosphere, and that's also been another issue that's been politicized. I mean, really, where do we go from here? Well, I think that's a very broad question. I would say that Nigeria as a whole is in a very desperate ecological situation. Uh, the entire coastline is under threat. We heard from the recent climate change report that sea level rise that is put in motion is more or less irreversible. It's going to go on for hundreds of years, and that is something to worry about. That means that those, of, those who are looking for seafront location for their homes should, should think about building their, house, building their houses on stilts, on, on pillars above the waters, because the floods will certainly come. Okay. Now, the kind of desperation that we see in the Niger Delta in the oil, and the communities with all the oil spill is very deep and complex, and we should re truly be worried. It's alarming, because when you find communities having their source of drinking water contaminated, their farmlands contaminated, and this Things are le just left there and corporations and government are busy blaming third parties and calling sabotage when there's no sabotage as being responsible as a way of avoiding uh, action that should be taken. Then we should really see that uh, the people are being betrayed. The betrayal is deep and wide. And, you know, it's uh, looking at in the long term with the low fortunes of the fossil fuel industry and the fact that the world is moving shifting away from fossil fuels and fossil fuel industry would not would not be the biggest income earner in the near future it is really a time for us to as Apobare said as Alessi said to declare a state of emergency in the entire Niger Delta otherwise we're going to have not just stranded assets but stranded communities. And this would be very, very sorry, a very sorry situation indeed. Okay. Um, you know, when when the UNEP report was written, released in 2011, some of the locations near Lemi area had, had hydrocarbon pollution about five meters deep. And that was very alarming. That pollution has gone as deep as five meters. But by the time some of those locations were cleaned up last year, Pollution had gone as deep as 10 meters, which means that for every day that pollution is allowed to linger on, we means we are getting a deeper, deeper and deeper problem on our hand. Wow. Now, the recent case that the court, uh, the Shell agreed to pay 
et jamais vous pouvez plus et vous pouvez plus pour la pollution de la COVID-19. Et ce n'est pas une nettoyage, peu importe ce qu'on dit. Donc, vous pouvez imaginer quelle situation sera maintenant si la nettoyage sera commencée à l'étonne et à l'étonne. Après tant d'années, that the pollution has been, they were just a ton of soil trying to hide the pollution without a real cleanup. And so I see a situation where the people will not only accept uh, financial compensation, which is just a token, a symbolic thing, but they should also demand a thorough cleanup of that location okay. uh, that has been like shares property since 1970. All right. Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, unfortunately, we're ending on a very gloomy note and, a, uh, you know, an, an uncertain note because we're not necessarily sure what the future holds. But I want to say thank you. Nimmo Basi is an environmental activist. I want to say thank you to Celestina Kwobiri. He is obviously of the Ogoni Solidarity Front and Father uh, Edward Obi is of Nagon. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you thank for you. having me. All thank right. You. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about um, pensions for former governors. Is it something that we should struck, uh, strike out of our constitution here in Lagos? If you're a Lagosian, you want to be part of this conversation. Stay with us.